Hello, welcome to State of the Map Day 2. Uh, my name is Heather Leeson, and I'm going to be your host for a little bit this morning, this afternoon or the evening, depending on when you're watching or participating in this recording. We're going to start off today with um, how to map a city's public transport during a pandemic. That sounds like lots of fun. So we have Christoph Hanser and Ted Johnson from a, from a team called Trufi, and they're going to share a little bit more details about their stuff, and then we have a Q&A. So please do put your questions in the chat. And again, welcome to day two of State of the Map. Hi, dear State of the Map participants. We from Trufi Association are very happy that we can present in the next 20 minutes how we remotely map the city of Nokchot and how this generally can be done, um, for example, during a pandemic. My name is Christoph Hanse. I'm president of the Trophy Association, and uh, we are specialized on paratransit or semi-formal transport as it exists mainly in development countries. This year, uh, we had the challenge that we couldn't travel to a city that we had to map and we will show now how this was possible remotely with a joint force of people from different places. I'm not here alone. With me is the project team that will also explain later what their task, their challenge was, where they are located, and they will do this in their own language. No worries, there are subtitles for English. So what is Trophy Association? We are a non-profit startup in the informal public transport sector. We started three years ago with a journey planner app, a multi-model one that had been created and released in Cochabamba, Bolivia. We founded our NGO one year later and, since, and published our code as open source. And since then, many other cities joined and uh, we gained some publicity, which makes us very happy because our mission is to improve public transport worldwide. We think that people in development countries or wherever on the world should have the same options for public transport like we have them, for example, in my hometown Hamburg, where you can easily see what's now the best option to take. It's accurate, helpful, and that makes public transport attractive, and that's exactly what we want. We're a global team, uh, but we really need local communities, and you're going to see this in this session because uh, yeah, we could have done nothing without local people or as well as regional people in the country nearby. And this mixture is yeah, a really special thing about Trophy because people are spread all over the world and at the same time, the local communities really, really matter. But maybe first a second on what is informal transport at all. So we talk about transport that has no official stops, no schedules, no documented bus lines. Most agencies are private and not state or city governed. So a semi-formal transport then is if there's a mixture, for example, with formal transport um, like the gondolas in La Paz and pirate bus taxis at the same time being combined. Of course, we do all this multi-model that's in our genes because we really want to put all different means of transport in our data platform and in our app. The expansion after going um, going open source with Trophy app um, was to other cities like Accra, Duitama, Addis Abeba, Tetuan, Herrenberg. You will actually get to know today Leonardo who brought Trophy app to Duitama, his hometown. And uh, we have other pilots launched and are discussing with other cities about putting our journey platter there. What you can see as well in this slide is that the city of Herrenberg near Stuttgart also decided to use our journey planner. It makes us very proud that also German cities or European cities like Herrenberg and recently Hamburg are also using our app because in the end, it's working for informal transport and we made it for that, but it's a multi-model journey planner. It combines all means of transport, whatever it is. And so this basically also meets the needs of modern platforms um, wherever they run. Just uh, to complete the introduction, I would like to take about our products and our flagship product, the Trophy app. So that's what we do. 
We have also an app for drivers. We have a dashboard for cities, different tools. And what we generally do is customizing trophy app to cities, regions, countries, and also training local people, collecting bus network, maintain the bus routes, actually also with user data from the app if they want. And what we did in the project we're going to talk now is not releasing it an app that could be done later, but what we did in the in this project is doing the collection first. So what is Trophy App, with, uh, which with the whole story began? It's an open source multimodal journey planner made for development countries. That means that it's supported by old smartphones and not the very new ones, but by everyone, by every smartphone. It's also working on Android and iOS because it's made in Flutter. It works with open data technology, with OpenStreetMap, of course, also other data sources if needed, um, and also with other open source tools like Open Trip Planner. It's also multilingual. So we have, for example, Amharic language in Addis Abeba or Quechua in Cochabamba. And uh, as said, often enough, it's released under open source license, AGPL. So you can also use it for your city, your region, and we're actually very happy if you do. Our project, Knockshot, um, we had a donor that wants to support the local government and wants to give consultancy to have a better public transport. Why? Because public transport is very important for um, health, for equality of people, because um, many people use public transport, poor people use public transport, middle class uses it, and it also attractive public transport prevents people from buying a car. So there are very good reasons to stabilizing public transport and making it more efficient. And that's exactly what our client wants to do in Nokchot. Nokchot is the capital of Mauritania. The necessary steps for to do this is to collect the bus routes, digitize, map it to OpenStreetMap, create a GTFS, which is a virtual schedule, and to take mapillary photos. And giving that Analysis can be done on the network, white spots can be found, um, and mapillary important intersections can be found. And this way also the bus route network can be optimized. Of course, in a later stage, Trophy app could be released, um, and then also real-time data could show what people search, where they go, where they have good results, bad results, and that would make analysis even easier. But that's not planned for right now. So what uh, we were asked was to collect the data, and our typical approach would be to go there, do community building, OSM mapping, release the app, public transport planning, enable public transport planning. But in this case, the client asked us for, communi for community building and OSM mapping. And um, that was not possible due to um, the pandemic. So we actually really already had talked with our friends, uh, Le Libre de Geographes. They would have been ready to travel there, do the community building and um, collecting the data, uh, teaching people how to map um, as well bus lines, uh, public transport. But as said, that was not possible. And the client also didn't wait um, until the whole situation would change. So what we uh, uh, proposed then afterwards was um, to remote map Nokchot. In the middle of the map, you can see a green country. That's Mauritania. Um, it's um, yeah, it's it's a not very well known country for many people. It's in West Africa, and um, it's. It, to be honest, it was also not known to me beforehand. So we definitely knew we have to have a regional project manager um, that could coordinate the team. And we had been really happy that Jeremy uh, was willing to recruit locals, guide them, teach them so that they could do the data collection. The data collectors, of course, were from Mauritania. So they were they went into the buses they GPS tracked their positions, but that's what they're gonna tell in a second as well by their own. We then had two people in South America, two very good colleagues that had been with Trophy for a long time already. 
um, Luz that had been with Trophy since uh, minute zero because she we began with her in Cochabamba or she began with, with us in Cochabamba. She was the one that used the GPS and put it to OpenStreetMap. And Leo, who's also with OpenStreetMap for a long time and has much experience with GTFS and Mapillary, he was the instructor to do um, to do both and um, also to fine tune wherever possible. The whole project was led by our international project manager, Sarah. She she should be here right now, but she's on holidays. Um, so I step in for her. And we had the wonderful background support from Søren, who was helping here and there and everywhere. So that was the team spread over three different continents. And um, that was doing then the mapping with local collection and the remote mapping. But let's hear from the different people what exactly was their task and also what the challenges was. Please start, Feta. Marhaban, I'm Fetah Mohamed Mustar, a member of the Office of the Mediterranean Foundation. It was important to be in the local government to the events in the Trophy. I was in the group of people from six people. مدة ستة عشر يوما من الثاني والعشرين مارس إلى غاية الثامنة إبريل الفين وواحد وعشرين على رسم مسارات النقل العام وتحديد جميع نقاط التوقف والانطلاق لهذه المسارات الخاصة بالحافلات التابعة لشركة أستبي وكذلك الحافلات الصغيرة والسيارات الأجرة لتنفيذ عملية رسم الخرائط استخدم الفريق المحلي تطبيق أو أستم تراكر للهواتف الذكية الذي يعمل بنظام الأندرويد بعد ذلك يتم تحميل المسارات على موقع أوبن سريت موب كمسارات جي بي اس أثناء رسم الخطوط يتم تحميل جميع النقاط التي تقع على هذا المسار مثل المستشفيات الجامعات والإدارات العامة وغيره وهو ما مكن من زيادة حجم البيانات التي يتم جمعها مع كل مسار كانت نتيجة عمل هذه المرحلة من المشروع هو خريطة متكاملة لخطوط النقل العام لمدينة نوارشوت وهو ما سيساهم لا شك في تطوير النقل العمومي وتحديد النواقص التي يعاني منها كان التحدي الذي واجهناه في ضيق الوقت مقارنة مع ما يتطلبه رسم مسارات مدينة مترامية الأطراف كبيرة كمدينة نوارشوت وقد يحتاج المسار الواحد إلى أكثر من ساعتين ونصف ذهابا وإيابا هذا بالإضافة إلى مستوى الجودة المطلوب توفره في البيانات وهو ما لن يكن سوى بالكثير من متابعة عمل كل فرد من الفريق وهو ما يتطلب الكثير من الجهد والوقت. Thanks a lot, Feta. Let's go next to Luz. So please explain us how to do you do the whole mapping to OpenStreetMap. Hola, mi nombre es Luz Joque. Soy de la ciudad de Cochabamba, Bolivia. Soy parte de Trufi desde su inicio y he colaborado con la recolección de rutas y la digitalización en mi ciudad. En este proyecto también estuve a cargo de la digitalización de las rutas que fueron recolectadas por el equipo local. Estos datos fueron cargados a OpenStreetMap de acuerdo a estándares definidos por la comunidad. Para subir las rutas utilicé específicamente JOS, donde implementamos nuestro propio preset para personalizar la configuración según nuestros requerimientos. Entonces, Pude tomar las trazas recolectadas en GPS y pude realizar las relaciones para subir las rutas. También utilizamos las fotos de Mapillary para subir los puntos de interés y contribuir con la mayor cantidad de datos en el mapa. Así es como eh, resultado se tiene 1,998 puntos agregados y 124 rutas agregadas a OSU. Personalmente, mi mayor reto en un inicio fue la diferencia de lenguaje entre el español y el árabe. Sin embargo, pudimos sobrellevarlo realizando la comunicación a través de un formulario donde yo solicitaba la información que requería y el equipo local lo completaba. Gracias. Thanks, Luz. That was really interesting. So, Leo, would you please go next and tell how you created the GTFS? Gracias, Christoph. Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Leonardo Gutiérrez. Soy de Duitama, Colombia, y he contribuido al, al mapa de OpenStreetMap desde el año 2008. Fundé la asociación Rumbo Digital, que es el socio local de Trufi en Colombia, 
y soy profesor en el Colegio Salesiano de Duitama, donde enseño OpenStreetMap a niños y a jóvenes. Con ellos implementamos la Trufi App aquí en Duitama, en nuestra ciudad. Provengo además de una familia fabricante de autobuses y hoy orgullosamente contribuyo a las labores de Trufi en todo el mundo. En Nookshout eh, fui responsable de tres tareas. La primera fue crear la metodología de adquisición de datos en campo. Esto consistió principalmente en organizar las trazas GPS de las rutas de transporte de la ciudad, que fueron la base para construir las relaciones en OpenStreetMap. Posteriormente trabajé también en la revisión de, de estos datos dentro de, dentro de OpenStreetMap. Fui responsable eh, además de la generación de los archivos GTFS, que son los archivos que modelan un sistema de transporte público y son el estándar ahora. Nuestros archivos obviamente se generan usando eh, OpenStreetMap y para ello utilicé algunos eh, programas creados por los desarrolladores de Trufi que extraen la información de OpenStreetMap y la escriben en archivos GTFS. Finalmente trabajé en la coordinación de, de la toma de fotografías a nivel de calle usando Mapillari para, para el uso del equipo local. Calculé una ruta optimizada utilizando el algoritmo de, conocido como cartero chino para optimizar sus recorridos. Desafíos, Christoph, sí tuvimos varios. Uno de ellos fue el idioma con el equipo local. Tuvimos varias reuniones usando únicamente traductores árabe-español, español-árabe, y contra todo pronóstico pudimos coordinarnos muy bien con ellos y salió todo muy bien. A nivel técnico, el principal desafío en todos los aspectos fue la calidad de los datos. Varias veces tuvimos que repetir recorridos para obtener mejores trazas o mejores fotografías y fue duro tener que pedirle al equipo local que repitiera un, un, un recorrido, sobre todo pensando que es en el desierto. Gracias, Christoph. Thank you very much. Um, and now, Jeremy, so what about you and how did you manage this international project and what challenges did you have? Bonjour, je m'appelle Jérémy Perales, je suis français et cofondateur de la startup Dabago. Dabago est une startup marocaine qui développe des applications de calcul d'itinéraire pour les villes en développement et nous sommes aussi partenaire régional de Trufi depuis un peu plus de deux ans maintenant. Ce projet de mapping local avait besoin d'un chef de projet régional qui connaisse la culture et des personnes directement sur place. Mon rôle était donc de gérer la relation entre les différents acteurs, que ce soit en termes de recrutement, formation, partenariat et trouver des solutions en cas de problématique. À la fin, j'étais aussi en charge de la qualité et l'exhaustivité des données collectées, que ce soit sur OSM ou Mapillary. Mes principaux challenges ont donc été de gérer la multitude d'acteurs, sachant que Nouakchott a énormément évolué cette dernière année, et aussi le fait que nous étions en distanciel, rendant beaucoup plus complexe le recrutement, la formation et la recherche de solutions, notamment pour le Wi-Fi ou pour les moyens de déplacement. Thank you very much for all this, um explanations on how the team did their job and you see that many different things just play together to remote map a city. We had local partners uh, that we are really happy that they um, helped us, that they invested in the project and that they made um, contacts possible, networks possible and supported the project like the World Bank, Dabago, the region of Nokchot, the French Embassy, OSM Mauritania, and also the Union National of Mauritania. As a summary, I would say that to our surprise, it went very, very good to do a local collection and remote mapping. So the results were much better, to be honest, than we accept, expected. However, that comes uh, with the cost. So what we usually love about mapping projects is the community building, that when we leave, there are people that really know then how to do OSM mapping, public transport mapping, and keep it live in the long run. That just luckily went very well because Le Libre Geographe had been instructed people last year, and so we didn't start with nothing. And um, on the plus side, um, we had been really happy that there was no necessity to fly there. I mean, as an NGO working in public transport, we are really about saving CO2. So it was happy to do to really do this in this case as well. 
So as summary, I would say that remote mapping works very well. Um, and um, it's just important that there's technical knowledge and in best case OSM skills, because then you don't lose the negative part of not having built the community that much. So as Trophy, we are now ready to remote map the next city. And please contact us if you want to map your city, if you know people um, that could arrange that, or if you're just interested to follow up on the topic. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we are interested in your questions. Thank you especially for the help of you, Luz, Leonardo, Jeremy, Feta. And um, on the right side of this page, you find also the email addresses of the different people. So feel free to contact us. Thank you very much. Looking forward to your questions. Well, welcome back. I'm really excited to have heard a little bit about Trophy and uh, from Christoph and Ted from the team. And also just really thank you for in being so inclusive with all those people from around the world to be able to tell their story in their language. And I just, my, my compliments for trying to be as inclusive as possible. So we do have some questions. Um, I'm just going to check the chat here and see what we have. Um, great. So I'm going to start off with the first question. Um, what negative side effects um, did you have on mapping during a pandemic because you had to do it remote? So how do you work with those communities remotely to be able to kind of work with them? And uh, what were some of the side effects of that? That's the first question over to Christoph or to Ted. Do you want to alternate? Um, no, that I can take that question. So um, the, the project was um, for us a very positive surprise because um, it worked surprisingly well being remote because we really prefer and I hope that's what we already said before, we really prefer to be on premises because it's so much better to build a community so that people in the long run as well learn all of the techniques, how to use OpenStreetMap, how to map transport, so that they also committed uh, to update it in the long run and that it's not only a one-time effect. So I think all of these things are better if you establish strong relations and stronger relations happen when you're on premises and you talk, you drink a tea. Hello, my name um, is so uh, that's why we wanted to do the project uh, first with uh, Le Libre Geographe that maybe some people also know here. Um, but then because of the pandemic, of uh, the World Bank sponsored the project. Um, so because of the pandemic, we were not allowed to go there. So we just had to think, um, what do we do else? And we luckily we have, we knew uh, someone, Jeremy, and. Uh, next door uh, in Casablanca, who has a lot of Mauritanian friends as well. So he said, I can I, I can manage that. So we focused on that the local teams would just uh, only really only collect data with the right tools and the right methods and that we would um, yeah do the mapping remotely. The negative side effects, um, I would say, uh, and it worked surprisingly well. Um, also because uh, the local team had been taught beforehand by Le Libre Geograph just two, three years ago, so they didn't start from the scratch. But um, I would say negative side effects are, of course, that uh, people are a little less engaged because in the end they they collect it and then magically it's an open street map, but they didn't do it on their own. So um, that's one of the negative side effects. Um, and but I think for the um, for the quality itself an open street map, um, maybe as well if the same team would have collected and mapped, they might have seen many type maybe any mistakes while doing it that someone from Colombia and Bolivia couldn't see. But yeah, to sum it up, I think it worked uh, surprisingly well. And because we it saved some uh, it saved uh, flying, it saved money, so maybe it's also a good option in other cities. Yeah. And uh, Heather, yeah. I really liked your introduction uh, that you love the many languages. So uh, we an NGO, we look for volunteers. Everyone that likes many languages <laughs> um, can have <laughs> a trophy and uh, bring in many expertise. We are 100 people now uh, spread over all over the world and doing very different things. Yep, I appreciate your always be recruiting for your community. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to go to your next questions because we only have a little bit more time before we cut over to the next session. I want to give you time. Um, so there was a question about, do you have timelines for Hyderabad, India? And also, how do you source GTFS data? It must sound like a computer. Uh, for places with complicated transportation routes and modes. Does yeah, that make any that's sense really to you? Fantastic uh, two questions. Um, so Hyderabad, actually, that was uh, only talkings, never worked out. So we are really strong in South America and Africa right now. But we really look for the first Asian city to uh, where we're going to work. We only did pilots also in Manila, but never uh, got further. So when you hear this, you're from Asia, please. Um, we, uh, we would love to be more in contact. We also have Asian volunteers, but no cities. Um, so, and the other question, GTFS and complicated transportation routes and modes, we only work in complicated transportation routes and modes because it's always informal or maybe semi-formal. Um, mm -hmm. Herrenberg, Hamburg, where we are recently, German cities, they are at least with uh, car sharing, uh, electronic car stations and all other modes, so it's always complicated. And we never, and, and, and usually we never know when the next bus comes, there are no schedules. Uh, so the GTFS is all, always a best guess. And what the, um, with virtual timetables as well, because we know there are more buses during the day than in the night. So we just do virtual, we just help ourselves to, to get it done. And people of course know that you can't, cannot rely on a minute um, in an informal transport, but there's GTFS real time. And what we're really looking for is the first city that uh, gives us real time data uh, with GPS so that we can really say when the next bus would come. Um, and we have a driver app that drivers can use to share their GPS position. So in the long run, we'll be ready uh, to really give accurate data on that. Mm -hmm. Thought you nodded okay. if you want to add something, just. <laughs> I'll just add if, if it. If it wasn't complicated, then Trufi wouldn't be there. I mean, it's yeah. the reason. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So uh, thanks. I'm glad that your sound is now working, Ted. Um, I'm going to go to the next question, which is um, uh, just because you mentioned Herrenberg. So do you know why and how in Herrenberg they have combined Digi Transfer, Transit and Trufi, which actually comes to a question that I had for you is that how do you make sure that you align with local partners, partners and local open communities? So one, how do you work with digital trans, Digi Transit and Trufi, but also how do you work better with local existing communities and networks and partners over? Yeah, um, so um, about Digi Transit and really um, I, I would come Please write me your email or something. I will contact you later because honestly, um, I I don't know um, where exactly was uh, what exactly was missing. I just checked um, during the session on Digit Transit a bit more. Um, if Digit Tra Transit has an open source multi-model journey planner app, um, I would not know why to take Trophy. As far as I've understood, Trophy is a puzzle piece exactly that it perfectly. Uh, enriches um, what Digi Transit has, um, but I might be wrong. Um, and uh, we actually promoting with the people from Herrenberg, we are promoting the setup of Digi Trans uh, Transit as a data platform and Trophy as a um, uh, multimodal journey planner. So we hope that other uh, cities as well follow this um, this approach. Um, and then the the other question had about the local partner. So. Um, we are an NGO, so we are not about like making as much money as possible in all the cities we are. We really want to um, uh, enable local entrepreneurs to take trophy into their town and maybe and hopefully make their living out of it um, and live from it. Right. Uh, so for example, um, they can do local advertising, um, enable location based um, services. So they can put many things um, to Trophy app because it's very customizable. And um, and we hope that this way um, there's an income for people and an incentive to really keep the work on making OpenStreetMap better, making public transport better, making the app better. Um, and we, we just had a strategy meeting yesterday. My dream is that we also um, enable schools for entrepreneurs so that they can really learn how to bring Trophy into their places. Very nice. So um, 
I think it's really important to work as local as possible with local partners and really respect and honor local communities. And I think this is something that's been tried and true and lessened in, in, um, in OpenStreetMap, but also in humanitarian and development work. So how easy is it, uh, just to go to this next question, is how easy is it to get local assistance? There's um, my timer, by the way. We have to be brief. It's very, it's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy. Because that does not easy. sound easy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how easy. <laughs> Or do you mean assistance by local, uh, from which side, like get assistance from Trophy to to do the local work or from? Um, I don't think the person clarified, but I would say that there's a couple of layers in that one, right? So how do you work with local communities, which you've already kind of demonstrated in your talk, but also you have to work in government constituencies, right? So governments won't work with you unless they work with you, right? So I think that's really important. Yeah, so, so working with governments and cities is really time consuming and only locals can really do it and moderate. It needs a lot of time. We're just doing this uh, with a very nice team in La Paz and in Trujillo, Peru. So that's very, very time consuming. Um, and what we, we always try to recruit people from our network, uh, from OpenStreetMap, um, so dedicated, committed people. Um, yeah, that that really want to make a change in in their places, making public transport uh, more accessible, more transparent, more useful. For Nuakchot, we worked with a, a pre-existing OpenStreetMap community. That was that was an excellent find, and the, and we they were very anxious to work. So there there is contact with the government. The government w is interested in the data, but we didn't really, as far as I know, you can correct me. Uh, Christoph, uh, we didn't really go through the government to, to do the mapping. Uh, we just got the team going and they did the mapping. And the data will be shared with the government. Okay. Super fascinating um, in terms of working with governments. And I know that you have quite a few government partners. Um, I want to turn, um, just before I come to the, uh, come. I want to turn just a little bit to the software side of this. Um, and there's a software se se question in the chat, but I want to give a segue question. Um, so how can open source projects learn from local communities? Because I think there's a real tension between coming in and parachuting versus point blank. How can the technology be shaped by local values and local culture? So what are some of the lessons that you've learned about working with OpenStreetMap, but also the open stack that you're working on to make sure that you're respecting and honor those local communities, their values and cultures? Um, I think the best example is how our app in, in Accra began. So Trotro app in Accra was done by our team in Bolivia in voluntary work. Um, and they just mm -hmm. worked together. And um, so th this is, um, yeah, it's just communities helping each other. It's not like we do something mm -hmm. for someone different, but really people helping each other and, and, and developing useful new features. Um, but Ted, maybe you have a different answer. Well, I think that uh, one example is you know it's the local communities that know actually what constitutes a bus stop. Um, you know, the, the, yeah. there may be bus stops on the on that are on a map published by the government, but with informal transport, uh, those bus stops, their bus stops might not be part of the local map. The local communities know where the buses stop. They know that it's, there's not a bus stop sign there. Sometimes it's, it's, uh, you know, it's you know, ten meters uh, up from the mailbox or ten meters up from something else. So, in, it, in ways like that, local knowledge very much informs uh, how Trufi does its mapping. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Okay, so we have one uh, kind of last question, but also um, uh, if you do have further questions, we have another, I think another minute and our tech team will have to uh, let me know. Um, so it was answered in the chat, but I think I think the complexity of being able to release software in multiple platforms is, is really important because you wanna reach users where they are, people particip participants in communities where they are. So how are you able to release uh, with uh, an AGPL license? Um, yeah, so to be honest, I haven't heard about that problem because we, we have this license and we are on Apple Store. Um, so I, 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 I also tried to get our lead developer who's just waking up in Bolivia, um, but I don't know the answer right now. I, I check my phone. 
Yeah, maybe this is something that you can answer bilaterally. And I would encourage you to take these questions and maybe write it up and write a diary entry in OpenStreetMap. Write a, write a diary entry about some of the answers that you have, because it's always good to be at State of the Map and to learn about what people are doing around the world. And so just um, some closing comments, like what would you, what do you want to see for Trophy next year? Like, what do you want to see with this community in OpenStreetMap? Just two sentences, very tight, very tight. Christoph, we'll start with you, then Ted. I, I would be happy to see more cities and more um, more communities and entrepreneurs that bring that like the idea of trophy, bring it into their hometown and make their public trans, uh, transport more accessible and transparent. Yeah. Uh, related to your last question, Heather, I'd like to also see more cities, but I'd also like to see more platforms too. I would like to see uh, an SMS-based uh, interface for people who don't have smartphones or a USSD mm -hmm. interface so that you, it's not required because most people where I live in Madagascar don't have smartphones, but they are the people who are using public transport. Wonderful, wonderful. So um, just to say that, you know, my compliments for working across borders, languages, multiple admin boundaries, and also just the local context and et cetera. And just also for in doing a video, including all of those beautiful people from around the world. I'm sorry that they can't physically be together with you, but just uh, just to be able to kind of connect voices about who is using OpenStreetMap. And just, this came up yesterday. Do they know they're using OpenStreetMap? Um, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So when an app user uses it, this came up yesterday in one of the sessions. So when an app user uses it, they know it's OpenStreetMap. Yeah, he, that's one of the copyrights. Uh, that, that actually, of course, on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Heather, right. for, for having us. It was wonderful. Oh. Yeah. It's my pleasure. And just have a really great state of the map. Yes, Ted, go ahead. I was, I'm glad I may have finally made it to the, to the presentation. <laughs> my connection problems. Yeah, my yeah, my, my, my kingdom for internet and technology that works for all of us, it certainly has been a, a lesson for, especially this year, uh, for what the digital divide is. And so I'm always happy when we can have a conversation. So we are going to close off the session. So if you do have further questions, do not forget that there actually is an after talk chat space where you can go and talk to Christoph and Ted. And so Christoph and Ted, if you haven't seen this in the platform, and you're going to have to do some funny uh, connections for Ted to be able to have him here. But but Christoph, I'd encourage you to go over there and to be able to answer any anybody questions, uh, anybody's questions and be able to do that. Um, so with that, um, thanks again. And I'm going to move on to the next session. So just warmly, thanks again for this session and for the warm conversation. Over to Patrick for next technical steps. Thanks to you, Heather. Bye.